Hi everybody, it's Sarah Cray with Let's Make Art and I teach watercolor and today we are here to do our Let's Make Art Matter postcard for Dr. Kim. Here, so this was in our March subscription box and if you're unfamiliar with what I'm even talking about, if you subscribe to any of our boxes at Let's Make Art, inside every subscription box you get a postcard that is pre-stamped and pre-addressed to an individual who can use a little extra love and support. So um, Dr. Kim is a pediatrician in a small Texas town and of course our frontline workers have been experiencing so much over the last year and a half. Um, and on top of that, she unfortunately lost her mother due to COVID. And so um, we just wanted to send her a little postcard to let her know that we appreciate her and we're thinking about her and we're so sorry for her loss. Um, so what we are painting, I was thinking about this project and I was thinking about Texas. And when I think about Texas, I think of blue bonnets because it's their state flower. And so we will be painting a blue bonnet field at sunset. So very serene. It's beautiful. Um, now I do just want to remind you guys that the point of this is not to create a perfect painting. The point of this is to just let someone know that you're thinking about them enough that you took time out to make something for them. That's all this is. So if you have something else that you would like to paint instead of this, please do so. Please feel like you don't have to follow this, but if you want a little bit of guidance and an idea, this is what we will be painting together. So we will be using colors from our March subscription box. And if you have other paint colors, I would recommend if you, if it's possible, if it's not possible, it's really not the end of the world, but if it's possible to have like a purple, I just grabbed violet because when we do these far flowers, I wanted a touch because I feel like blue bonnets are blue, but the actual center of them have like this really beautiful like purple burst. And so I wanted to like bring some of that purple into the fields a little bit. So. The colors we will be using are Tahoe Blue, Deep Yellow, Burnt Orange, Black, and then if you have like a violet or amethyst or even magenta actually, or you know, a pink or a purple because you can mix that with blue. Okay, so the first thing that we are going to do is we are going to sketch this out. So I'm going to draw the horizon line. The oh, so you taped it down. Oh, I'm sorry, that's right. I did tape it down so it would have a clean edge. Um, this is my favorite kind of tape. If you're curious about what type of tape it is, maybe stick around for the May box. Foreshadowing. <laughs> okay. So I taped it down so it has a clean edge. You don't have to, but it will make it way easier to do this. And then I'm going to put in my horizon line. The horizon line is basically where the sky meets the ground. So I'm going to put it a little bit above the center here. I'm going to draw a little sun on the right hand side there. And then I have like some foliage, like a tree line here. If you painted with us in the month of March, this is kind of like an idea of our modern landscape. I was trying to combine a couple of things that we learned about. So our modern landscape and also even our, um, our mountain top, because we have that beautiful like sunset color and and the ocean and this is what I wanted to point out to you guys because you know in the ocean tutorial I talked about how the waves that are closest to you they're they're going to be bigger they're going to stick out more and then as it f goes back into space and that depth it actually smooths out and becomes a smooth line that same idea that same concept is true also for when you're painting like wild flowers so what I want to point out here is that in this background it's like almost all blue because we're just seeing the tops 
of all of these flowers. It's just the tops. And then as we get, as it works its way down, we see more green chunks and then we actually see the individual flowers. So I want, I just want to like pay attention here. You guys don't need to sketch this out, but I want to show you that the brush strokes are going to be more up here because we're showing these, you're standing in this field, you can see these individual flowers and you can see the green in between the flowers. And then as it makes its way, it gets like thicker like this, like kind of more blobs. And then when it gets back here, it's just like thin lines like this. You see that? Yep. Okay. All right, so we're gonna start with our sky. I'm gonna use my round six. I'm gonna grab some burnt orange and I'm gonna overlap where, it, where the foliage is because it's a dark value anyway. And I'm gonna do orange along both edges. And I'm gonna work quickly here, you guys, but this is a small area, so you should be able to cover it pretty quick. And using just water, I'm blending. I'm not all the way to the sun yet. Just kind of blending out. And then now I rinse my brush and I'm gonna pick up deep yellow. It's gonna be the most saturated around the sun. And then I'm gonna blend that out into the orange. And use water too. And let your yellow overlap with your orange. And I'm gonna do one more drop of yellow right around that sun because I want this to be super vibrant. And you guys all know when that sun is setting and it's so yellow and the rays kind of like go all around it, making it super gold. And then while it's still wet, if you need to go back in with your orange and kind of like work some areas again, it's easier to do it while everything is still a little bit wet. You been to Texas before? I have. What part do you remember? Um, I've been to a few parts. Um, it starts with a P. Um, <laughs> I just keep on thinking El Paso or tacos because we just El Paso. Went. El Paso. Thank you. <laughs> I've been to El Paso. I've been to San Antonio. Um, <laughs> I think I've been to Austin. That's Texas all. is huge. Yeah. Okay. So there is our sun. Gosh, I just love, <laughs> I just love a warm sky, you know? Okay. And now we're going to move on to our field part. So I'm going to start at the back and work my way to the front. On the very back here, I am going to mix a little bit of my Tahoe, and this is where I'm going to put just a tiny, tiny bit of purple, the tiniest bit. If you don't have any, it's not the end of the world, but I just thought it made it, it added something. Atmospheric discoloration. Now, one thing I do want to point out is I know that we've talked about atmospheric perspective where when things get farther away they get lighter this in this painting it is the opposite and honestly I looked at quite a few different reference photos of fields of blue bonnets and I think the reason why this one is different is because of how the sun is setting if I had to guess but I'm not sure I just know that the few that I looked at the the as the sun was setting the backest part was actually the darker value than what was closest to me and i think it's because the light is going away but i'm not positive it i just also have to do with like like the angle of the ground you know what i mean i don't know i'm just spitballing here yeah 
I mean, the other thing too that could actually be it is just the fact that the blue is more concentrated and not broken up where in the front here we see the sections we see the highlights we see where they separate there's a greater um, contrast in the front where in the back it's just kind of more of an even value but it is darker what you're trying to say is there's no rules and everything is lawless what i'm trying to say is there are general rules but everything gets thrown out of the window depending on what the lighting is the lighting informs everything so like depending on what your lighting is in your re reference photo, that will, it could totally contradict everything that I said. And I'm, 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 yeah, I'm just gonna say, I'm just, to, I'm just going to acknowledge that that is a truth, where if like during the water tutorial where I kind of talked heavily about atmospheric perspective, how the light value gets lighter, and that's not true in this case. And I'm acknowledging that. Okay, so now we got this purple blue. And you can grab a little bit of black, but not a lot, because that's going to gray your color. And I'm just going to kind of do these, like, brush strokes here. Dang, that's a good color. I love it on your palette, too. Yeah, it's, and it's going to look like blues and purples are complements to orange and yellow, so these make each other pop, because they're next to each other. And you can see I'm leaving some space for to go in and put green in later, but not a ton. And then as I get closer here, so I'm in kind of like the midsection, I'm gonna do more just Tahoe blue. And I'm gonna leave greater chunks for my green. Okay. And then when I get up here, I'm gonna change my brush stroke. And I'm be like, okay, there's a blue bonnet, there's a blue bonnet. Like so. And at this point, if you wanna put a tiny bit of that purple and blue in your blue bonnets up here, you can. We'll go in and we'll put like the more dots in later. This is just our initial. And remember, we're going for loose here. This doesn't need to be perfect or realistic. This is kind of more <laughs> impressionistic, I would say. Now, this isn't totally impressionism because impressionism is when you can see the actual brush strokes and we, we blend it out a lot, but it's that same idea. I wanted to keep this loose. Now I'm gonna mix a green by mixing together my blue and my yellow. You can mix other greens by mixing together your blue and your orange. That's gonna create like a desaturated darker green. So I have a few different greens here. I'm actually, and then you can also mix a little bit of black in there. Not a lot though, because remember whenever you add black, it grays whatever color you have going on. I just looked, you should not eat blue bonnets. Hmm. I think, I feel like that's something we've already learned that we shouldn't just eat plants. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Also they're a lupin, and I don't know if you remember this, but when we lived in California in the yellow house, I bought a 10 pound bag of lupin seeds and just Johnny apple seeded them around the yard. Yeah? I don't think, I think maybe one lupin came up. Oh, lupins are beautiful. I also bought a bunch of California poppy seeds to do the same thing. Oh my gosh, California poppies, I just can't even handle. I love them so much. Okay, now kind of wherever there's like this white section, I'm going to put in green. And I'm going to do darker green in the back, and then as I move my way forward, I'm going to make it like more of a yellow green. And some of these colors are gonna bleed together. That's okay. And then when we get up here, we're gonna change our brush strokes. Same thing, we're gonna kinda do more like sections in between the blue. 
Just change our brush stroke here. And then the ones in the front, you can have a little bit more white space. I'm going back in with my blue just a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna let that dry before I kind of finish that off. And then if you need to like go back in, if your like green got a little bit crazy and you need to go back in and put in some more blues, go for it. Mm. And then now we're gonna mix a really, really dark green for our like tree line. So that I'm gonna do blue and black and yellow and this one you can have a little bit more black because it's all right if this color isn't super saturated and then just put it in now everything is dry around it make sure everything's dry before you put this in and you can go along the edge and just kind of do different shapes so it's like, is that a tree? Is that a bush? I don't know. Just make sure you don't make a pattern because your brain will want to do that. Patterns are crazy. You know, it's like nearly impossible to get a computer to make an actual random number. Really? Yeah, because you have to program it to pick a number. <laughs> so like... I don't know. I think it's probably been done, but I think it's very difficult to do. Your brain does the same thing. It's hard to actually pick a random number. Yeah. Okay. Now I'm going to go in and do a little bit more like detail dots on my blue bonnets because blue bonnets are like really curved they're such an interesting shape i actually really wish that i could like see and hold one in person because even when i was looking through like detailed photos of them i still don't feel like i got a true understanding of the actual shape of the petals i think they fold fold and then one comes out but i'm not positive and they're like layered on top of each other so it was really i was like i wish that i could like go into that photo and like separate them out to see what was going on but anyways so they they do have like a main stem and then little stems come off that main one and that's where the blue bonnets are or the petals so um i'm going to kind of do a little sarah i have held them in person yeah this is going to be a stretch but f hear me out okay the cartoon quest for camelot do you remember it kind of okay the chicken gets turned into a chicken with an axe nose. Okay. That's what a blue bonnet is like. It's like this flat head portion, and then there's like this three-dimensional axe shape of the same color that pops out the front. Okay. They're kind of like a weird snapdragon, reminds me, but I don't know. I can see that. If any of you got that Quest for Camelot reference, please. <laughs> Let me know. It's so hard though because I'm such a visual person that even like someone describing things to me, I can't, I still can't really understand until I can like touch it. Yeah. That I think that's just how my brain learns. Um, okay, so I did some dots. Now the areas were, were a little bit wet so they bled a little bit, but I'm okay with that because again, we're going for loose. Um, I wasn't super, I'm not super concerned about detail. And then if you want, you can do a couple like stocks. So you could take like a darker green and kind of like do stems. But again, this is loose. We're not, we're not trying to uh, fully render because I really wanted this to feel, I wanted to communicate a feeling more than like rendering something perfect. And to me like, this is communicating um, like peace 
and calmness and warmth. Um, I love, sometimes I love looking at paintings and just trying to figure out how it makes me feel to look at them. And it's, that's a super helpful exercise for you guys to do as artists because as you start creating more work that's your own and you want to start communicating things instead of rendering an object, you can think about, you can start noticing, when I look at a painting, how does it make me feel? And then you can start recognizing patterns between those things. So then if you want to communicate those things, you know how to do it. So for me, like, because of the warmth of the sky and the colors being used, that's why it feels warm to me, because those are warm colors. Blue is also a feeling like associated with serenity and calmness. Um, but then also like the horizontal smoothness of the brushstroke, the smoothness of the blending of the sky, that seems more like a calm painting to me than if you were to go in with a lot of brushstrokes, a lot of textures and things like that, that would activate the space. So um, I don't know, I, I just kind of want to point out that there's little things like that compositionally wise, color wise, that you guys can start paying attention to. And that's how you kind of decide if you like a painting, right? Like, how do you know if you like something? Well, how does it make you feel when you look at it? I think sometimes people get hung up because they think that art, in order for it to be good, means that it needs to be rendered perfectly, but that's not true. Art has so much more purpose than that. It can, it can communicate thoughts and feelings without having to necessarily represent something. I mean, that's why, that's why there's abstract expressionism. That's why there's all these other things. So um, I just want to encourage you to kind of allow your mind to wander and explore and think about how it makes you feel too. And that is our painting. Let's take off the edges. This is my favorite part always. So you're gonna carefully pull away. Look at that. How did you come across this magical unnamed tape? Was it a customer who suggested it or what? No, actually it's um, somebody that Keenan works with sent him samples and was like, have Sarah try this tape. And Keenan put it on my desk, and I was like, yeah, 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 sure. And then I tried it, and I was like, oh my gosh, this is the best tape. <laughs> like, look, there's no bleeding. And no tearing. And no tearing. Oh. Beautiful. So satisfying. So satisfying. Okay. Which one do you like better? Ooh. I think I kind of like how this sun is lower in the sky on this one. I also like that there is more of a highlight in the middle here, like a lighter value where that got a little bit lost on this one. However, I like my tree line on this one better. This orange area against this green right here, I think is really beautiful. I also like my close-up of my blue bonnets better on this one. Por qué no los dos? So both. <laughs> Why, Why not, not both? both? Okay. Well, um, that is our postcard for Dr. Kim. Um, I hope you guys take the time out to do this. I know it's so scary. One, it's so scary making something. Two, it's so scary sharing it. And three, it's even scarier sending it to someone. I understand all of that. But the whole point of this is to think outside of ourselves enough to connect with other people, to show them that they don't have to go through hard things alone and that they are being thought about and they, we care about them and we love them and just a way to make the world a little bit kinder. Um, if you can think of someone who you would maybe like to see receive a postcard, we do have a nomination form. So if you go to letsmakeart.com and scroll down to the bottom, there's a button there that says nominate here. Um, I highly encourage you to do this. This is 
this is just what we're all about. It's just utilizing art to reach and connect with other people um, and also ourselves because I think it's extremely beneficial for us to create and it opens up a lot of things and helps things that we wouldn't even anticipate and that at the end of the day it's not about a perfect project it's not about rendering something perfectly it's not about having this amazing technical ability that's that can be some of it if, if you're interested in that if you just keep painting and practicing you'll get there the other part of it is just how it makes us feel that's it so um Thank you so much for painting this with me. Um, Dr. Kim, I hope you enjoy these postcards. I hope they help you feel loved. And um, if you guys need anything, oh, that was the other thing I was gonna say. If you are not a Box subscriber, you can still absolutely do this. You just need to reach out to our customer happiness team for the mailing address. So you can email hello at letsmakeart.com. So if you're not a subscriber, please still participate. Um, now, that's all I got to say. Michael, thank you for being here. You're welcome. We'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye.